Greetings, my brethren. It is such a joy to be with you today, to share with you in these devotions. Speaking on the subject, tell me, why am I here? Yes, it is good for us to realize our God-given purpose. Why am I here? For when this life comes to an end, and those of us as his children stand before him at the judgment seat to receive our rewards given, oh, it will be done based on fulfilling our purpose here on earth. It was Jesus when he had finished his task here on earth. He said, Father, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work thou givest me to do. Let's know what our work is and let us work hard on finishing the work so that when our life would come to an end here on planet earth, we would be able to say like the Apostle Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. There are many who start today and do not finish. What is our purpose here as a church? And when I say as a church, remember I'm speaking of the church of God. We are all born again believers, are members of his church. I call your attention to the words of the song entitled, The Church's One Foundation. It is written by Samuel J. Stone hundreds of years ago. In the fourth stanza, he said, Yet she on earth hath union with God, the three in one, and mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. O oh, happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace that we, like them, the meek and lowly, on high may dwell with thee. The church is one foundation. We are all one in Christ, with one common cause, with one job to make sure that it is done. And that is the sharing of the word. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We are in Acts chapter 3, and we are looking at this miracle that took place at the gate of the temple where this man lame from his birth, from his mother's womb, who would be carried by the temple every day two men of God, they were going to the temple to pray. And he saw them going into the temple and he cried out to them and he asked of them that entered into the temple for alms. And Peter and John seeing him, they fastened their eyes on him and said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Last morning, I shared with you how will we accomplish this purpose. And I told you that it can only be done by divine cooperation. We need divine cooperation. We need God working with us to get the job done. Secondly, it must be done by human cooperation also. Not only divine cooperation. Yes, it must be done by divine cooperation also by human cooperation. Peter and John were walking together. This is very important. In verse 1 of Acts chapter 3, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. It is so important for people to walk 
together to get the work of God done. It is not about Peter. It is not about John. It is about the God that they represent. Look how it is brought out in these verses. Verse 3, verse 4, and verse number 11. This human cooperation. In verse 3 it says, Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple? Axe and arm. Verse 4. And Peter, fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. So not only that Peter fastened his eyes, John, his partner, he also fastened his eyes upon him. And they said, look on us. Look at verse 11. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. Now, as I read this, this speaks of partnership. They know the importance of unity. Oh, if the church of God would be unified today, so many great things will be done for the glory of God. Togetherness, this is what they had, being in one accord. Two men with gifts from God, different gifts, walking together for the glory of God. In the church today, the members have the gifts to operate in the church. This is what God expects. There is a variety of gifts, gifts differing one from another. There is a great need for workers of our Lord to get together respect each other and the God-given gifts or the God-given ministries. Over and over in the scripture, we read about this. If we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and read those verses, I want to read them for you this morning, a little lengthy, but let me read it. Beginning from verse 3, he says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God Call it Jesus a cross, that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. And verse 4, Now there are diversities of gift, but the same Spirit. There are difference of administrations, but the same Spirit. There are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which walketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the walking of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the zoning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. All these walk at that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of the body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot would say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body one eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now God had set members, every one of them in the body, as it pleased him. And if they were all one member, 
where were the body? But now we are out. Now are there many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee. Now again the hand to the feet, I have no need of thee. Nay, much more. These members of the body, which seems to be more feeble, are necessary. And these members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these are bestowed more abundant honor, and our comely parts have more abundant comeliness. What am I trying to say to you this morning? I'm trying to say to you this morning that none of us have all the gifts. God has given gifts, these gifts to different ones, and he wants us all to use these gifts for his honor and for his glory. Brethren, let's do our part in sharing the gospel. Let's do our part in preaching the gospel. Let's do our part in telling others about the love of Jesus Christ. I am so thankful that I can be a part of this and partner with you in getting the gospel across the globe. Father, thank you for the gifts that you have given every one of us. Lord, we have different gifts. And when these gifts come together, these gifted people with these gifts, oh God, great things can be done for you, for the body will be unified. So unify us, dear God, in the spreading of the gospel. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Yes, it is true that he needs us as human beings to help in the sharing of the gospel. It must be done by human cooperation. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord.